You look terrible in your jeans. Let's fix that. This video was inspired by me looking terrible in my jeans. What happened was this. My wife took a little video of my kiddo and me playing together. I was in one of my most comfortable, easy fitting pairs of jeans that I thought, that I thought had that cool, slightly oversized dad jean vibe. They didn't. There was the reality in sharp Apple ProRes 4K. My ass was hanging out, they bagged out at the hip, proportions were messed up, uh, they fitted sloppy through the thigh and knee and they were, they are, too long. So maybe you, maybe you do look bad in your jeans. Maybe you don't. I guess if you click on this video, you might think that you do. Let's come up with an easy step-by-step -step system to ensure that you look damn good, simply, simply amazing in your jeans. Here are the bases that we're gonna cover. First up, your body type and how that informs the fit of the jeans. Then we're gonna move on to, to the size of the jeans because fit and size, that they're not the same. Then we're gonna look at the, the denim, the washes and the features. Are they age appropriate? That's also another important question. And then the, the, the two most important, the two essential questions that you have to ask yourself. That if you don't ask yourself, all of the above, all that we've spoken about is just for naught. We're gonna ask those questions. But first, identifying your body type. There are three different body types. Ectomorph, mesomorph and endomorph. That's basically tall and skinny, average to athletic build, and then there's the, the bigger guys out there. First up, the ectomorph. This is for all the, the lanky guys. You have a, a slender, thin and delicate build with long lean limbs and narrow hips and shoulders. The fits you'll be looking at will be towards the, the slimmer side of the straight tapered like jeans with a, with a good medium rise. They're gonna look good on your build and are roomy without showing off your slimmer legs. The, the styles you should avoid would be wide leg and baggy jeans. They will create an imbalance between your, your, your top and bottom half and they're gonna draw attention to your slender frame rather than hiding it. And on the flip side of that, stay away from the skinny jeans. They'll make you look even slimmer and probably a bit gangly. And finally, high-rise jeans. They're just gonna make your bum look flat. Right, so next up is the mesomorph. This is for the muscular, athletic, and well-proportioned winners of the genetic lottery. So broad shoulders, narrow waist, strong arms and legs. If you're a mesomorph, you're in luck. In comparison to the, the ectomorph and the endomorph, you have the widest choice. But ideally, you'll be looking for straight tapered jeans with a, with a mid-rise. They should have enough room through the thighs without being overly baggy, and then taper slightly from the knee down. Stay away from the extremes. Skinny jeans will make you look like you're wearing jeggings in your muscular legs, and baggy jeans will make the lower half of your body look overly heavy, and that's just gonna, it's gonna mess with the proportions. In terms of rise, stay away from, from low rise if the waistband comes anywhere near your ass crack. And actually this is a good rule for all three of the body types. Finally, we have the endomorph, the, the rounder, softer, and more curvaceous build with a, with a higher percentage of body fat and a tendency to store fat in the midsection, thighs, butt, and calf. Jeans with a high rise will be your go-to. This will, will flatten the midsection and tuck in the butt and thighs. Look for a straight cut, slightly the wider side for the sake of comfort, and stay away from skinny jeans and slim fits. This is just gonna, it's gonna create an imbalance between your lower half and your upper half. Right, so now we have your body type down and you know where you're aiming in terms of fit, the next thing to do is sort out the size. In my case, with the jeans that inspired this video, I actually nailed the fit. These are the 316 CSAs, that's a classic straight fitting jean with a slight taper from the knee down. I am a mesomorph that's let himself go a bit, a lot, so I'd be looking for a straight fitting pair with a high rise and a slightly tapered fit. Exactly this. So what went wrong? Well, I got the wrong size. Keep in mind the size and fit are two separate things. The fit is the shape of the jeans, so wide, straight, taper, boot cut, flare, etc. The size is the actual dimensions. You can see it demonstrated perfectly here. I have the very same pair, yeah, different denim for sure, but very same fit, just one size down. And they look great, if I say so myself. The best way you can ensure a good fit is to try the jeans on in store, but I know this is not always possible. If not, opt for an online store with A, a good set of size charts and a measuring guide, and B, a good return policy. But if you follow what I'm just about to tell you, you'll not need to return them. Go grab a measuring tape and a pair of jeans or trousers that you know fit you well. Then follow along with the store's measuring guide. Then compare your measurements with the ones for the jeans that you're looking at. With the waist, thigh and rise, you're pretty much wedded to the given sizes. With the length, however, that's, that's an easy fix. You need to take them along to a good local tailor and have them hemmed for you to your exact leg length. You know, in fact, a lot of the top-end brands will only sell one long leg length, 
and they will expect you to have them hemmed. And it's really that simple. It's what I do every single time I'm buying something online. And honestly, I have to return very, very few things. But Matt, you might ask, why did your jeans not fit? Well, it's cause I didn't ask myself those two essential questions. But for now, let's talk denim. Let's talk washes, let's talk features, because this will be a big factor in getting you looking good in your jeans. I mean, if you really get into the weeds with denim, denim fabric, it comes in so many different varieties, it's impossible to cover everything. So I'm just gonna give you the cliff notes. The thickness of a denim is measured in ounces per square yard of fabric. So the thicker, the heavier the denim, the more it weighs per square yard. Lightweight would be considered anything from maybe eight, nine ounces to perhaps 11 or 12. Midweights from 12 to 15, then heavyweights from 16 up. And it can get dumb with the denim going up to anything to like 32 ounces and sometimes more. That's ridiculous, just don't do it. I think the best all round weight is around towards the 13, 14 ounce mark. I've tried lighter, it's less durable. I've tried heavier and it's unwearable. Then there's how the denim has been initially treated while it's still denim fabric and not denim jeans. So that's, it's samprised or unsamprised. Always, always, always go for samprised. The way you know is that unless it specifically says unsamprised on the jeans, it's gonna be samprised. That's, it's as simple as that. Now, samprization does one essential thing ensures the denim does not shrink. So the jeans you buy will be the same size after you've washed them, which is, well, it's always good. And that is why the vast majority of jeans out there are samprised. Then there's this whole raw denim, selvage denim thing. Raw denim can be unsamprised or samprised, but it is basically a denim that has been sewn into a pair of jeans and gone through no post-processing. It's dark, it's crispy, and if we're being honest, it can be uncomfortable. And selvage, that's a denim that's been woven in an old fashioned shuttle loom. And yeah, it does tend to be better. I mean, not always. It's easy to spot though with this little line in the out seam. And then there's all the post processing the jeans can go through. This is anything from a little rinse to make the denim a little bit softer, right the way to this kind of monstrosity. This pair here, the one we're talking about, it's been stone washed. Basically, it lightens up the denim, and, and I like that. If I'm going for a full-on tex and tux, then I like a little bit of distinction between the jeans and the jacket. What you'll go for is, is totally up to you, but my advice would be not to go too far in any direction. Don't go too heavy, don't go too washed, don't go too distressed. In my opinion, if you're looking for the best possible combination, that's a, a 14 ounce Sanfrey's raw selvage denim. Finally, features. Personally, I don't think jeans should have or need to have any features. They need to have five pockets, a button or a zip fly, a button to keep them up, and belt loops. This was a utilitarian garment. It was pared down to the essentials over a long time. So let's just keep it that way. Things like overly fancy stitching, line by pockets, selfish detailing, or whatever the hell this is, they're just redundant. The fourth and final thing you have to take into consideration is your age. Are the jeans you're looking at age appropriate? I think if you're over 30, I can definitively say you do not look good in skinny jeans. By this, I don't mean slim fitting jeans. I mean something akin to jeggings. Maybe they fit you. Maybe you've got the bod to carry them off, but they do not look good. It's the same with, with bedazzled jeans, overly distressed jeans, or jeans where you're looking like you're going to a coal miner's cosplay. Listen, my days of wearing skinny jeans are long behind me. They were long behind me 15 years ago, so even if I did not look like a drop lasagna, I would still not be going for a pair of skinny jeans. Okay, so, right, let's take me uh, as the use case here. Where are we? I am a mesomorph who's over 40 and well on his way to being an endomorph. So I'm looking at the straight to straight taper fits with, with a high rise, 49 Sanfrey's denim with, with not too much of a wash on it. And that is exactly what I have here. So what went wrong? Well, I failed to ask myself two essential questions. First one, am I chasing a trend? Second one, did I see some dude out and about or on the interwebs looking great in a certain style and I'm wanting to chase that clout? And the answer to both these questions was a resounding, is a resounding yes. You see the whole dad jeans thing, I'd, I, I'd been avoiding it and I avoided it pretty well. It, it had its peak and it was really just trailing off. But then, but then there was this like little revival that happened amongst the guys that I looked to for style inspiration. I don't know why, I don't know how it happened, but it was a thing again for a minute. So then I started chasing that trend. I wanted a little, a little taste of that 90s good life. And just around about that time, lo and behold, 316 dropped the perfect pair. 
classic straight, stonewashed, but in an amazing salvage denim. But I was afraid they weren't going to be dad enough. I wanted that exaggerated dad jean look cause I'd seen it working for other folks out there. So I sized up. And now we are here today with an amazing pair of jeans that don't work, don't fit. I, I, I would have had it all, just one size down. And that is because I failed to ask myself, am I chasing a trend? Am I chasing clout? And if you're looking to avoid chasing trends or clout, check out this video right here for a foolproof method of building the perfect man's wardrobe. 